the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, always for His infinite love, mercy, and kindness, allowing us to be in His holy presence, in His holy church, and sharing His Word, which is the only truth in existence, the Word that gives life and light to those who believe and accept His Word, which is the Holy Bible. We thank our Lord Jesus for all of you, my beloveds, you are present here in this holy church, and all of you who are watching us through live streaming, may the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, and protect you all the days of your life. Amen. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Psalm number 119, verses 97 to 112. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep your precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way, that I may keep your word. I have not departed from your judgments, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I had every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgment. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, I pray the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, a very good evening to everyone. How are we? How are we? Not good. How are we? Not good. How are we? A little bit higher? Oh, I'm going to recharge your batteries my way from now on. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. It's another <coughs> blessed Friday. Time flies when you're having fun, isn't it? Like, it, was, it was like as if yesterday, that last Friday, just went so quick. For me, anyway. I don't know about you, but uh, time is really flying. Um, before we start, we're going to ask our beloved daughter in Christ and son also, Eddie and Jacqueline, to start this evening with this beautiful church hymn. Please, Eddie and Jacqueline.
thank the Lord. So how are we? Good. All right, beautiful. Before we start, I would like to make a very small announcement, and it's an absolute privilege and honor for us to make this announcement. With us today is a beautiful part of the team, which is the under-16s Mounties Junior Rugby League team. Can you please put your hands together for our beautiful under-16? Um, this under-16 Mounties Junior Rugby League team, uh, wonderful young men sitting at the front, uh, the first two rows here, um, they pray before every training session and also on the game day as well. So before starting, they pray. Now for this, a much stronger applause, please, for these beautiful young men. Go rugby league, baby. <laughs> Tackle him, brother. Rah. Um, and also, they, um, they consist of so many different nationalities. Uh, in the midst of them, there is Lebanese, Italians, Australians, Asian, and Pacific Islanders, baby. Go, the Islanders. Normally, the islanders are big boys, yeah? But just as big as they look from outside, they have even a bigger heart. Their heart is beautiful. I love you guys. And obviously, we love all these beautiful nationalities, Lebanese, Italians, Australians, Asians, and Pacific Islanders. Please put your hands together for this wonderful team. Um, and the person behind these beautiful young men and their trainings is the one and only, our beloved coach, Buddy. Please put your hands together for Buddy. <laughs> Buddy is a wonderful uh, young man. He's got a heart of gold and so is his family. So um, well done and thank you so much. My beloved sons, uh, be, for being here, I really appreciate it. God bless you, and I pray, whatever you do in life, may the Lord Jesus guide you, protect you, deliver you from the snares of the enemy, and bless you abundantly. And whatever you do in life, I pray that you prosper for the glory of the one and only Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Please put your hands together again. Man, I feel like very energized now. I want to be one of part of the team. Can I be under 16? And uh, yeah, what's up, brother? All right, beautiful. So, what are we doing today? We'll be talking about rugby. Uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> the book of Revelation. That's the one. All right, we're going to continue today, chapter 19, and we'll be reading from verses 8 to 10, inclusive. So, it is book of Revelation. Chapter 19 and verses 8 to 10. The Holy Bible tells us, And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, See that you do not do that, that I, uh, I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy and all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Now last week we spoke about the bride the bride of the Lamb. And in, in verse 8, in verse 7, sorry, in verse 7 we said that this bride was uh, getting ready, preparing herself to being ready. Just like to say a couple of things and then we'll come into our topic. 
So in verse 7 last week, we said that this bride was preparing herself to being ready. Now, we said that in chapter 19, those 24 elders, which we saw in chapter 4, uh, representing the, the church of Christ, both Old and New Testament branches, 12 of the Old Testament, 12 tribes of Israel, and 12 of the New Testament, the 12 apostles. These are the two branches of the Lord Jesus. He is the good shepherd to the Old Testament branch and the New Testament branch. He had him together around his throne in heaven. John the Beloved saw that. But we said that in chapter 19, we see these 24 elders being separated from one another until the end of the book of Revelation, which is chapter 22. Reason being separated for the Lord wants to show us the difference between the New Testament church and the Old Testament church. We said that the New Testament church is the bride herself to the heavenly groom, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the entire Old Testament church are the invitees to this wedding. So from our father Adam, Abraham, Noah, Enoch, all the big, big, big calibers of the Old Testament, all the fathers, the patriarchs of the Old Testament, and all the prophets, uh, all the kings of the Old Testament, they are nothing but being invited to the wedding, and the wedding is about us. We are the bride, and Christ is the groom. So you see the difference, how much glory the Lord is granting the New Testament church. Who am I compared to my father Abraham, the father of faith? As St. Paul speaks of. Yet, Father Abraham will be invited to the wedding, and I, the piece of wreck, will be the bride to that wedding. There is no greater glory than this for the Lord to give us. We should never fight over materialistic things. Don't ever fight over nonsense. And, they, and then the bride is preparing herself to be ready. And we said being ready is giving herself to the Holy Spirit entirely. Those who are true faithfuls to the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit will use them fully in order to glorify Jesus Christ, who is the groom to this bride, the New Testament church. There are two who work through this human being. One being Christ, the King, and the other one, Satan. Two of them, both of them, I should say, both of them work through every single Christian soul. When we go to the Old Testament, where the Lord God came and spoke to Moses, and he said, you build me the tabernacle, that big tent, you build me that tabernacle, and then the Lord God said to Moses, I want two people to work in this tabernacle of mine. One from the tribe of Judah, and the other one from the tribe of Dan. Now these are sons of Jacob, who was called later Israel. So he said, I want two people working in my tabernacle. One from the tribe of Judah, and the other one from the tribe of Dan. Now, who came from the tribe of Judah? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to his holy and mighty name. He is from the tribe of Judah, the lion. But the tribe of Dan, who's going to come from the tribe of Dan? The Antichrist. When we go back to the book of Revelation chapter 7, and we saw in chapter 7, there was 144,000 being, being sealed for God. Those 144,000, 12,000 from each tribe of the Israelite nation. 12,000 people from each tribe of the Israelite nation. 12 tribes times 12,000, 144,000. These 144,000 
were sealed for God. When you read in Revelation 7, the 12 tribes, the name of Dan is not mentioned in those 12 tribes. Yet he is one of the sons of Jacob, Israel. But he is not mentioned in, the, in chapter 7 being sealed for God. Why? Because whoever goes against the Lord Jesus Christ, their name will not be written in the book of life. They will not be mentioned. They will be gone for good forever. That's why Dan is not mentioned in Revelation 7. Because those tribes were being sealed. Stamp sealed meaning authenticated, approved, accepted by God. And God will never accept someone who is an anti-Christ. Against Christ. God the Father has only one son. He only recognizes Jesus out of the entire human race, by the way. So don't ever think God approves of anyone outside of Jesus Christ. Now, this is not discrimination. This is not being, you know, judgmental. This is the truth. You bring me one human being that lived anywhere near Jesus Christ of Nazareth lived. Impossible. You bring me, whoever you want to bring. Come on, let's go. I am ready. Show me a life of a religious figure, of a philosophical figure, of a political figure. Anyone, you bring me anyone. No one ever lived like Jesus. The holiness, the purity, the perfection, the excellence, the glory of Jesus Christ. No one. And we've said this before, and I'll say it again. If anybody wants to compare the Lord Jesus with any other religious figure or whichever that figure is let's say I'll go with you and let's compare but I will tell you this my dear friend if you say your religious figure came with morals with ethics with values with principles okay no problem the ultimate your religious figure could have achieved in their life on earth was to change a bad person into a good person with those teachings with those morals with those values the ultimate they could have achieved was to change a bad person into a good person jesus christ of nazareth all glory to his holy name he did not come to change a bad person into a good one he came to change a dead person into a living one in this there is no comparison everyone falls short jesus stands alone so unique so highly exalted and elevated beyond every religious figure and every human being he is the only one that said if you believe in my word even if you die you will live but if you take my body and drink my blood, you will live in me forever. Jesus promised life and eternal one too. No one ever dared to promise humanity eternal life except Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, in this alone should raise a humongous question mark to you, my dear friend. You need to find out more about Jesus Christ. Why is he so unique? Why is he so special? Why, why, why? Why? Twelve eyewitnesses and 70 others who witnessed the Lord, lived with him, walked with him, saw everything, heard everything, documented everything. Not, they are not obligated to falsify things. In fact, they died for what they wrote and they died for what they believed in and never blinked their eyes twice. Even when the sword was placed on their necks, they never denied Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Isn't this also another question mark? Why would they do that? Are they so ignorant to die for someone who is a false prophet or a, or a holy man? Unless they died for the one who said, I am that I am. The true living God revealed in the flesh came to visit earth. Heaven embraced earth when Jesus was born. So my beloved, 
in the tabernacle at the time of Moses the prophet the Lord God said I want two people to work in my tabernacle one from the tribe of Judah symbolically representing Christ the king and one from the tribe of Dan symbolically representing Satan the Antichrist now why the Lord through his infinite wisdom allowed Satan to work through us as well reason being since we are so weak we are created on the basis of love and you've heard this before and I'll say it again wherever there is true love there has to be freedom because without freedom you can never live this love you can never taste this love and you can never share this love what allows you to live this love to taste it to share it is freedom so therefore wherever there is true love there has to be freedom freedom is indispensable you cannot separate it from love and since there is freedom there has to be choices otherwise how can you say you are free if you don't have more than one option imagine if God placed you in this path and there is no other path but this one and then God came and said you're free I'm not you placed me in a, in a path I didn't choose you chose for me where is my freedom and this is why God said to Adam I'll give you options there are trees over there you can eat from there is the tree of life in the heart of the center and the heart of the Garden of Eden you can eat from but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil don't eat from it he gave him options why because Adam was created on the basis of divine love with love came freedom with freedom choices and with choices it required something called the will the will is the tool for me and you to say yes and to say no including God I can say no to God and he will not interfere but he will indirectly but directly he won't until I allow him freely willingly based on love come God and do as you please he won't until we call him for this reason God allowed Satan to work through us you know why because you see God is good and God is love God doesn't hurt God doesn't kill so he uses Satan to break us he uses Satan to break us when we become in a simple terminology naughty he didn't laugh when we veer off the road God will allow Satan to come and smack us so there are two working in this tabernacle temple the temple is the body your body here so he will allow Satan to work in us every time we say no to the Lord Jesus he will call Satan and say smack them but I'll give you a limit a boundary not freely I have limited you because I know each of my children what they are capable of handling he will not give us something outside of our capacity but even when we go through hardships it is the grace of the Lord Jesus that is carrying us as well but Satan will work in us Christ will work and Satan will work every time we do something good remember it was the Lord the good God who did it in us and every time we do something bad remember it was Satan who is working through us because through Satan it is a disciplinary action for us to wake up It's a more simplistic approach when I'm healthy when I'm wealthy when I'm strong when I'm young no one can say anything to me and especially living in the West it's a free country brother what's up bro get down brother lay me some skin whoa what's up what, 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 what. so when I am healthy wealthy still young and it's a free country I can go wherever however with whomever no one can stop me 
Mom and dad come and say, son, please don't go with these so-called friends. Be quiet, mom and dad. And if you talk more, I'll dial triple zero. They'll throw you in the cage and take you to Fairfield Police Station. <laughs> Hello to all the <laughs> coppers. <laughs> and please don't book me when I'm speeding on the road, okay? That's a confession. <laughs> all right. We try to be good. But if you book me, I'll book you. <laughs> I'll book you my way. I'll make a phone call. I'll make the phone call to the one who created you or created me. So you better not book me. All right. So parents say, don't do it. No, I'll do whatever I want. The, the priest, the father says, don't go, don't mix. No, we don't listen. We don't listen to, to no one. What happens? The Lord allows Satan to come and get me into trouble. Uh, I was caught taking drugs. The coppers caught me. I was speeding and I was drunk and I had an accident. And my friend got really hurt in that accident. He almost lost his life. What a big shake. What a big quake happened in my life. Who allowed it? The Lord. Why? Because I'm disobedient. I'm not listening. And if he lets me freely as I wish, I will end up destroying my entire being. God is love. He purchased us with his own precious blood on Calvary on the cross. He will not let you go until he calls you home. So he will let Satan to come. When I'm healthy, I don't care about anything. When I'm sick, <laughs> I will not leave one saint alone without mentioning their name and begging them for their intercession and their prayers. I'll go to every church. I'll, ch I'll ask every priest. I'll ask every father, please pray for me. I am sick. I don't care about anything anymore. Before, I used to gossip about everyone. I gave up that gossip. I'm all focused on this illness. All I care about is to be healed. And the moment the Lord heals me, did you know, did you know, did you know, did you know? Why can't we be good boys and good girls without going through hardships? The Lord is our Father. And as the Father, He will not let us do naughty things without a disciplinary action. And that disciplinary action, Satan is working also. Satan will come and break us. Christ, who is also working in us, will make us. Christ, light. Satan, darkness. Christ, holiness. Satan, filthiness. Christ, life. Satan, death. Christ, construction. Satan, destruction. But let me tell you this. Between the destruction and the construction, this is where you will meet your Messiah face to face. Wow. Between the destruction and the construction, this is where you get to know the Messiah. He reveals himself to you between being broken and being amended once again. When we hit rock bottom, it is then and then only we realize there is no one that can save me except God. You see, the Lord will make sure I come to this realization. The Lord will make sure I come to this truth. The Lord will make sure I come to this insight where he will make sure I no longer rely trust on in, in people but my reliance and trust must be first on God then people that are given to me by God but you see before I relied on people I didn't care about God so what will God do he will take them away one by one you put Take this as an advice, okay? And don't try it, it's dangerous. 
you put anyone before the Lord, he will take that person from you. And he will make sure that the people that you thought they were the one and only for you, you will realize there is only one who is the one and only, and that is Christ, the King. No one, no one can love you, can help you. No one can support you more than Jesus. No one. So, the Lord, He will bring that person into this corner and He will corner that person for that person to live this reality that number one, I am a nothing. Yet before I thought I was everything. I was something special. When he breaks me, when he corners me and squeezes me, I'll realize right there and then for the first time ever. You see, the Lord is the teacher. When he teaches, you will learn whether you like it or not. <laughs> Believe me, no one teaches like the Lord. But sometimes he teaches the hard way. So when I realize that I am number one and nothing, number two, everyone is useless and hopeless no one can save me no one can heal me no one can take me out of this troublesome situation i've realized all along it was god from day one yet i was total ignorant of that and didn't care much when i come to this realization that only god can save me then god will show up when he shows up he will heal so between destruction and construction there and there only you will know not believe only you will know God exists <laughs> so when this atheist with all of respect when this atheist um, professor comes and gives a lecture at a university level and says there is no God I will laugh at such ignorant statement I will laugh why because God revealed himself to me who do you think you are piece of dust you think you've got credentials <laughs> come let's go together to a desert and live for one night in a cave let me see your credentials do you want to see what Satan looks like you, Mr. Professor, acting like a fool, like a little kid, ignorant, ignorant, unbelievable. But you see, it takes God to make a human realize that he exists. It takes God. And this is why God allowed Satan to also work in the temple, which is you are the temple. Christ works and Satan works. You listen to Christ, you're in the light. You listen to Satan, you're in darkness. Satan will break you. When he breaks you, you'll start calling and crying out to the light. Come to my rescue. The Lord will come. Why? Because he's love. He purchased us all with his precious blood. He will come to our rescue and says, mm, you learned your lesson? Not yet? Okay, Satan, a little bit more, please. Uh, bend him over here, twist him over here, barbecue him over here. Okay, you're well done now. <laughs> A nice sausage sizzle. <laughs> Satan is very ugly. He tries. Oh, yeah, he tries. If one thing you learn from Satan is patience, he is very patient. He will go along with you for years until he pulls the carpet from beneath your feet or the rug. He knows when to pull it. <laughs> He's very smart. But compared to the Lord Jesus, He's ignorant. He's not smart at all. Uh, the Lord can play with him and he won't know what hit him. 
So that's why you need the Lord. You need the Lord Jesus. Not your wealth, not your knowledge, not your whatever rank you have, whether it's in the church or outside the church. None of that will help you. You need the Lord Jesus. It doesn't matter you are the Pope, you're the Patriarch, you're the Archbishop, you're a Bishop. Who cares? If you don't have the Lord and you're the Pope, you're lost. If you don't have the Lord and you're an Archbishop or a Bishop, you're lost. Without the Lord, you are blind. I'm blind. All of us are blind. We need the Lord. It is the Lord who looks after the church. It is the Lord who protects the church. It is the Lord who shepherds the church. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me to green pastures and still waters. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It's the Lord. Not the Pope, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. And this Lord is God. And this God is the only one who created everyone and everything. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is his signature, Nazareth. The one who came from Nazareth. The love of my life. It's the Lord. Now we go on to our topic. <laughs> Now verse 8, and to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Look at this, and to her, what, who is her? The bride. Who is the bride? The church of Christ of the New Testament, us. We are the bride. And to her, the bride, it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen. What is this fine linen? It is the righteous acts of saints. It was granted. It was granted to her to be arrayed in fine linen. The fine linen is the righteous act. Meaning, when Christians, true Christians, followers of the Lord Jesus, when they do something good, it was not them. It was the good God who did it through them. Because the righteous act was granted to her. Granted means it was given by the groom, the heavenly groom, Jesus Christ. In other words, whatever we do that is of good nature, don't ever say I did it. Say it was the Lord who did it in me. Because all glory goes back to the groom who chose me who cleansed me with his own precious blood on Calvary and who made me do good deeds and made me a saint, a massive, mighty star in the heaven of the Messiah. So, all glory to you, Lord Jesus. I spoke to a person and I comforted them. It was the Lord. I prayed on someone and they got healed. It was the Lord. I preached. And so many hearts changed. It was the Lord. Everything is the Lord. The church glory is because of her heavenly groom. It was granted to be arrayed by fine linen. And fine linen is a very expensive material. Very expensive. It is the outfit of righteousness. And who is our righteousness? Christ. He is our dress. We dress up in Christ. We get covered in Christ. He is the act of holiness. And that's where saints are born. When they hold on to Christ till the end, saints are born. Till the end, not at the beginning, Till the end, my dear friend. You need to be faithful till the end. What happened to Dimas, the partner of St. Paul? St. Paul wrote and said, the current of the world took him away. Wasn't he filled by the Holy Spirit? Wasn't Jesus Christ his Lord and Savior? Yes. Why? What happened? Where is he? He got lost. 
Why? Because it is not when you are saved once, forever you're saved. No, you need to be faithful till the end, for I will give you the crown of life, Revelation 2.10. Faithful till the end. Faithful till the end. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Of course, the Lord will make sure his bride is without a blemish. She is clean and bright. Brightness comes from his light. For he said, I am the light of the world. For he is the S-U-N of the world. Because he is the S-O-N to his heavenly father. The son of God is the son of righteousness to the whole world. He is the light. And when the bride is faithful and loyal to her groom, she will receive that light from him and she will be arrayed in brightness and cleanliness because the blood of the Lamb of God made sure the church, the bride, is without a stain, without a blemish. For the blood of the Lamb of God took care of all her iniquities, her sins, wrongdoings, foolishnesses. He cleansed her, made her wholesome and perfect like him. Verse 9, then he said to me, this angel is talking to John the beloved. Then he, the word he means the angel, said to me, the word me is John the, John the beloved. Then he said to me, right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Who are the ones that are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb? The Old Testament church. Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. This is the Old Testament. The angel is saying to John, write this, blessed are the Old Testament faithfuls because they are invited to the marriage um, supper of the Lamb. If the invitees are blessed, then how much more the bride herself? If those people who are invited to the wedding are blessed, then how much more are we? We are not invited, we are the bride. The wedding is all about us. The wedding is all about us. Then how much more are we blessed, my beloved? How much more are we blessed? The Greeks in the ancient days, they used to refer to their gods as Makarios. Now Makarios in Greek means the blessed ones. So the word blessed used to be referred or given to gods of the ancient Greek world. Now a god is the ultimate su supreme authority. He is the highest level. So the word blessed is given so highly, so elevated to a person. There is no greater you know, gift than this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding. If those who are invited receive the ultimate blessing or gift from God, then how much more the bride? And you're worried about going downtown, clubbing? The Lord is giving you the ultimate glory and you are losing it for a moment in the pig's field called the world. The pig's field. You are replacing eternity with a tip. The world is a tip. You go and dump things that are useless, hopeless in the tip. We're replacing eternal life for a tip called the world and its temptation. Hollywood is a tip. Yes, I want them to hear this. Hollywood and everything that is produced out of Hollywood is nothing but a tip. We need to be very cautious and very careful, my beloved. This is especially to the young men and women. If you're a teenager, if you're in your 20s, 
30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. You're still young. But more so to the young generation, my beloved sons and daughters, I love you, but the Lord loves you the most. Don't ever fall into Satan's trap. And when somebody comes and says to you, let's go out, you need to ask where, how, what are we going to do? Who are we meeting? What kind of an environment is it? Location. Let me put it, let me put it in Google and see where it is. Is it the White House? <laughs> or is it the Parliament House? You need to know, you need to know what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. All of that are true sayings of God. What does true mean here? The word true. These are all true sayings. The word true, in a simple approach, I'll say you can call it the word yes. And also the word amen. Now please pay attention. In every human being, there are two things. We have the yes and we have the no. In every human being, there are two things. We have the yes and we have the no. Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the human side of Jesus Christ, the human side. In Him, there is the yes and there is the amen, not no. That is the difference between Him as a human perfect man and every other human being. In us, there is yes and no. What does that mean? I always like to bring an example of a, a man and a woman, right? They, they've fallen in love. That's a nice example. So my daughter, please open your ears and listen to what I'm saying. Take my advice, okay? Don't fall into the trap of this man by telling you a couple of words just into thin air. No, don't worry. The man will come and he will say to you, you are the love of my life. You are my life. I will die for you. Call him a liar. You are the love of my life. I have no one but you. The moment you turn your back, he finds 10 more. I will die for you. What a <laughs> He hears something in that dark alley. He will run for his life and leave you behind. He will die for you. You know why? Because when he said, I love you, yes, that's true. He loves you. So he's got the yes, the truth, right? So he says, I love you. He means it. You are the love of my life. He means it. But when it comes to the real deal, it's a no. <laughs> and vice versa, by the way, women, don't think you're going to get away with it. Yeah. So even the woman, she will come, Habibi. You know why I fell in love with you? Because you're Lebanese. You are just a natural. I looked into your Lebanese eyes. I couldn't handle it anymore. I melted like a candle, Habib Albi. I said, you are nicer and sweeter than Tabbouleh, or Baba Ghanoush, and all the deliciosa, and even heart to heart. You're sweeter than heart to heart. But then, out of all these long years, one day you didn't give her the money she wanted. Hala, hala, hala. Police officer, please come, you come here right now. I love this man, but no more. The no surfaced up. The Lord Jesus, he has the yes and he has the amen. When his father said, come, he said, yes, dad. When his dad says, die, he said, amen to that. So the Lord says and does. See, we say we don't do, but the Lord says and does. This is the difference 
between this perfect man and every human being. Every human being fails when it comes to doing. Everyone is brilliant in saying things, but they are useless in doing things. Christ is perfect in saying, perfect in doing. That's why I want you, John the Beloved, to write these things. All these are the true sayings of God because God says and does. Everything is true about Him. He is the yes and He is the amen. He is the faithful one. So now, you need to be encouraged when the Lord Jesus says, I am with you all the days of your life and until the end of all ages, why are you worried? Why are you saying the Lord has forsaken me? Why are you saying the Lord has forgotten me? The Lord has the yes and the amen. He cannot lie to himself. He is faithful to his word and he is faithful to his promise and he is the amen, always without fail. So when he says I'm with you, rest assured he is. Whether you are going through some difficult times, remember the Lord has never forgotten you. Never. The whole world will forget you. The Lord will never. All your friends will walk away from you. The Lord will never. Your family cannot help you. The Lord will help you always. You have to trust in the Lord. You have to trust in the Lord. Another thing why he, the angel is saying to John, write these, they are true sayings of God. Why? Because my beloved, when God says, I'm going to do this for you, and you wait. One month, nothing happened. One year, nothing happened. Ten years, nothing happened. Twenty years, nothing happened. Then you start questioning, doubting, saying, well, God promised, but he never delivered. No, God is faithful. It is all in his perfect timing. He came in a, in a vision to our father Joseph and he said, I will make you like a king and I will make your mom, your parents and your brothers to come and bow before you. And then what happened after that promise? He was sold to merchants, Ishmaelites merchants. He was sold by his brothers to Ishmaelite merchants. They took him as a slave to Egypt. And in Egypt, he was thrown into an equivalent of a Guantanamo Bay. It's a prison without having the ever hope of being released. Whoever goes into that prison will die and rot in that prison. He was thrown in that prison. Joseph wondered, God, but you promised me I'll be, I'll be a king. My brothers will come and bow before me. They sold me. I was a slave. And then from a slave into a prison, into a dungeon. I don't know. I'm going to die here. No one will come to my rescue. But the Lord has the yes and the amen. And when the time came, according to God's timing, not our ours, God took him out of prison and made him second in charge to Pharaoh. He ruled over all of Egypt. And his brothers bowed before him. That's not just a story. That is the truth. Because they are God's sayings. They are true. You wait on God's promise, you will be glorified. And whatever God promised you, He will make all your brothers bow before you. The time is at hand. They will bow before their brother. The time is at hand. Last verse. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You know, when John the Beloved heard all these things being said by the angel of God to him out of joy and happiness, he didn't have no choice but to fall at the feet of the angel 
Worship means respect, not worship as in God's worship. No, here means respect. See, some people misunderstand. <laughs> well, here it says worship. So was John the Beloved worshiping the angel? Of course not. It's a, it's a, it's a high level of veneration, respect. It is also mentioned in the Old Testament. They worshipped before Abraham. That means they respected Abraham, not the literal worship where it's given to God. Anyway, out of joy and happiness. You know when somebody tells you something so beautiful, so you become overwhelmed with joy and happiness, you don't know what to do. You jump at him, you hug them so hard and tight, and you kiss them and squeeze them and crush them. Because what they said to you, beautiful. So you went crazy. So you acted like crazy. John the Beloved couldn't hug the angel because he is spirit. His hand would have gone through him. You with me? So he had no other choice but to bow. That was the only way to do. <laughs> if he had hugged him, he would have... A spirit can't hug. So he, he wanted to show an act of appreciation to the angel. He said, you know what? I can't hug you. I can't kiss you. I can't pinch you. I'm going to bow before you. The angel said, whoa. Do not bow before me. I am a fellow servant. I am what? Your fellow servant and of your brethren. What is this verse 10 in Revelation 19 telling us? Angels are always with us. I am your fellow servant. I'm with you and with your brethren. So angels are always with us. So if somebody says, angels don't come to our rescue, don't help, don't intercede. No, they do. Verse 10. I am your fellow, fellow. There is fellowship. So they are with us. I don't want to scare you. Do you know one of the roles of angels, what they do? They have this book, but the pages, they don't seem to end. Every single day, from the day we start till we finish the day, they write everything we've done. Everything we've said. <laughs> they document it. And then they take it up to the ultimate, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So the angel comes and says, okay, let me see. Oh, okay. This young man here. All right, he started the morning. He said, thank you, Lord. Oh, so nice. I better write this down. The other one, he woke up. I hate my life. The angel is now suffocating. You know what makes the angel really want to work and help you more and more? Is when you help them praising the Lord. Because their nourishment, their food is praising the Lord. So when you do good things, the angels are happy. They're excited. They're jumping out of joy. Hey, hey write it down, Michael. <laughs> Archangel Michael. Write it down. That was beautiful. This guy said this to the Lord Jesus. And this, oh, look at this girl. She, she helped this poor man sitting on the wayside in the name of Jesus Christ because I looked and she said, in your name, Lord, I'm giving this money to this poor man. Wow, I'm so excited. I'm taking this back to the Lord Jesus. The book today looks stunning. But then this other angel sees this guy stealing, this guy killing, this guy destroying, this guy doing... He's feeling down. Yeah, the book is full, but it's very dark. Sorry, Lord. Bad day. But the angels are with us. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren. Do not bow before me. You need to worship God. I'm not. Jesus is God. I'm not. That's why my beloved Jehovah's Witnesses, Jesus Christ cannot be the Archangel Gabriel, uh, Archangel Michael. Sorry. Because they think 
Archangel Michael is Jesus Christ. I am your fellow what? Servant. You read the entire Holy Bible from cover to cover. I will challenge with love and respect anyone who can find me one verse where an angel is talking, saying, I am the angel so and so who is sitting in the presence of the Lord. You will never find it. I am the archangel Michael who stands before God. I am the archangel Gabriel who stands before God. But we saw the 24 elders who are human beings. The church of the Lord, Old Testament and New Testament, who are normal human beings made out of dust. And I saw the 24 elders sitting in the presence of God. Why? Because the angels are servants, but we are the sons to the Almighty God. A servant cannot sit in the presence of their master, but the son can sit in the presence of their dad. When the President of the United States walks through any gathering, everybody stands. Everybody stands. But that President is a father at home. When he goes home and he walks in, the son or the daughter sitting on this couch or on that chair, oh, hi, Dad. And if they're Aussie, they say, good-eye, Dad. You go, mate. Yeah. Oh, Dad, you know what? Don't talk, okay? The son is relaxed. The daughter is relaxed. The president walks in. Is they said, oh, but you're my dad. You're president for the country. But at home, you're my dad. So I don't need to get up and salute you. In fact, you better salute me, Dad. And along with it, a hundred bucks will do me fine. Because I'm going with me, might, And we're going to have a fish burger and a chocolate sundae, brother. Angels are servants, but we are sons. The most powerful angel in heaven, Archangel Michael, is one of the most powerful ones. This, this angel is a warrior. This angel gets sent by God when he wants to finish off a job. Go and finish it off for me. Michael. Archangel Michael, when he goes where Satan is, he does not negotiate. He does not even talk. He goes, chops heads and goes back. That's it. There are angels have no weapons, you know. They're very peaceful. They, they walk very quietly and very nicely. But there are angels are warriors. Like one angel can wipe this whole world if the Lord allows. Believe me. What nuclear war? weapon they won't even have the chance to press the button the angel will come and wipe them all if the Lord allows the angel to do it they are that powerful but the most powerful angel in heaven and the and the most and the weakest human being on earth when I walk that powerful angel stands and salutes me because he sees the blood of the Lamb of God in, in me he says, this is the Son of God. I salute you. You're my master. Yet he can blow at me like you blow at a candle and wipe me off. But he cannot breathe when I'm there. Because my dad is his God, his creator. That creator is my dad. So next time you walk uh, uh, in heaven, <clears throat> say, angel, come here. Um, can you do my fingernails, please? <laughs> I, I didn't want to go to Istanbul to get a facelift. Um, can you make me look beautiful? <laughs> I tell you this joke. This woman was crossing the road and she didn't look and there was an emergency call. An ambulance was flying on that road. So the woman just crosses without looking. The, 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 the ambulance was too fast couldn't stop, hits that woman, she dies on the scene. The angel comes to take her, he checks the record, he said, no, no, you've got another 20 years to go. Uh, there's a mistake here. So you have another 20 years. He said, no, no, please, like, I like it here, it's nice up there. 
He said, no, no, you've got another 20 years, you have to go back. So anyway, she said, okay, if I can't win with you, Angel, can I ask for one favor, please? He said, what is it? She said, when I go back, can I go and change my looks? Like go to Istanbul, get all these cuts and Botox and whatever, laser. He said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. And can I go on holidays and everything? He said, yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. I'll come after, I'll come after 20 years, I'll take you. Yeah, no so he takes her back, she goes and psh, she looks like a model. Now stunning, breathtaking. She's going, coming, holidays, this, she's having fun. One day she's crossing the road. An ambulance was coming at the same time and smashes this woman and she dies. That was one year after. The same angel came to take her. She's whinging and complaining. She said, you came a year ago and you told me I have 20 years. How come I died after a year? The angel said, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> you had a facelift. <laughs> From Khadija to Mariah Carey, I don't know. <laughs> that was a very powerful one, Khadija to Mariah Carey. That was, oh my goodness. <laughs> or maybe Abla, Abla wa Antar ibn Shaddad. So, <laughs> the angels are servants, we are sons. Jesus Christ, who is God, when he walks, I don't need to get up because he's my dad. In fact, when we read later on in the book of Revelation, it will come to it. It says when, when he sees his beautiful children walking into heaven, it says that Christ, he will get up from his throne, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And remember, in heaven, he is in his glories. Not the way he was on earth like a lamb. He is the roaring lion. He is in his glory. His eyes see behind the invisible. And his mightiness, his awesomeness, indescribable. With his glory, he said he will get up. It's here in the book of Revelation. He will get up and he will come forth and welcome us into his kingdom. And he'll make us sit on his throne. He'll get up. And he will make us sit on his throne, not next to him, on his throne. This is how much he loves us. So you have angels as well helping you, and they are servants. And he says, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. What is the testimony of Jesus? And your brethren, who are the brethren of John the Beloved? Those who testified about the testimony of Jesus. Who are they? St. Paul, he wrote the epistles like John the Beloved wrote the gospel and the epistles. St. Peter, St. James, St. Jude, all these are his brethren. They all testified about the Lord Jesus. All of them, St. Matthew, St. Mark, St. Luke, all of them wrote about the Lord and testified about the Lord Jesus. These are your brethren who testified about the Lord. You need to worship God because this God is Jesus Christ of Nazareth and his testimony is the spirit of prophecy. And what is his testimony? His word. The Holy Bible is the spirit of prophecy. When you read the Holy Bible, you are walking in the spirit of prophecy. Meaning, what is prophecy? Revealing what is yet to come. When you read the word of the Lord, live it, breathe it in, absorb it, allow it to be in every fiber of your being, that word will reveal things that others will not know. They will, it will be revealed to you because the Lord will reveal his secrets to his beloved ones, the faithful children, the loyal ones to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But he will not reveal it to the world. To the world, he'll come like a thief. But to his children, he'll come like the S-U-N, the light of the world. I'll leave you with this. When you get up early in the morning before dawn breaks into the horizon, you will see one big star alone. The others have disappeared. 
There is only one star. When you see that star, five minutes later, light breaks into the horizon. True? This star symbolizes the Lord Jesus. It is written about the Lord that He is the morning star. What is the morning star? This star. Who sees this star? Those who are awake, not asleep. Awake, biblically speaking, means those who are alert. Those who are ready for the Lord's coming. Those who are in denial of the world and its pleasures. Those who have seen themselves as total strangers to this world. I don't belong to this world. I don't live for this world. I have nothing to do with this world. These people are always alert. When you are awake, you will see the star in the early morning where everyone else is asleep so deep in their sin. But those who are awakened, they will see the star. That star is the Lord. The Lord says to the ones I love, I will come, I'll show myself. And just after the star, the light of the world will shine on you. But to the world, I said to them, I'll come to you as a thief. And the thief comes in the depths of darkness at night. And the thief comes at, an, at a time the house owner expects not. No warning, no alarms, no nothing. Comes and strikes and takes them before they are ready for it. But to his beloved children, no. I'll shine on you and I'll tell you when you're going to come to me before the day comes. I will reveal it. I'll show you that your place before you come there. And I'll tell you secrets I won't tell the world. Because they chose darkness over the light. They chose evil deeds over holiness. They chose Satan and rejected Christ the King. They chose darkness, let them live in darkness. But those who chase the light and search for the light, I'll come and I will shine on you. And I'll say, I am here. I'll make sure that you know I exist. And this no one teaches you. Jesus will. You need to be faithful to the Lord. And see if the Lord is going to be there in your life or not. I can assure you, he's always there. He's always there. So even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He leads me to still waters. Did you know the sheep cannot drink from a running stream? They get frightened. The sheep is very fragile. If the water is running, the sheep can't drink. Contrary to the horse, the horse doesn't matter. But the sheep, the moment they see the water running, they hear the sound, they run away. The sheep can only drink from still waters when it's absolutely crystal clear and still. And since the Lord knows you because He is your creator, He knows what is good for you, how to give it, when to give it. Everything comes from the good God. So he will take you to the still waters, not the running one. Because he knows the sheep can only drink from the still waters. Trust in the Lord. Because all God's sayings are true. He is the yes and the amen. In Christ there is no word called N-O. doesn't exist in Christ. Everything is yes and amen to his daddy. That's why he's the faithful one. That's why he's the perfect one. That's why he's the only savior and the only redeemer. Everyone else fails the test. Except Jesus. Amen. All right. Now to the next lesson. It'll take us another two hours. Just kidding. Um, Actually, before I ask, we ask Eddie and Jacqueline to sing for us again with their beautiful voices and beautiful um, melodies and beautiful lyrics. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. May the Lord have mercy on me. 
I was asked earlier before we started, uh, this person approached us and he said, can you please read this message? Well, my dear friend, you asked me to read it. I pray the Lord um, helps me to read it. And I pray whatever it is, may the Lord's will be done in your life and in the other person's life, my dear son. This message comes from someone called Rami. This message is to someone who is here. I am sorry about what I have done to you. I hope you forgive me one day and give me a chance to show you I am different person. Thank you. I'll have the wedding ring ready. <laughs> and I will marry you myself. You know, it, it, it breaks my heart when I see someone like loving another person and things are not maybe working or or they've done something and they regret it and they are very remorseful and I can see that in, in this uh, beloved son of ours Rami I could see that he was very genuine I pray you stick to that and you stay and steadfast in being a genuine person and uh, whoever this message is for uh, apparently the other person is also here I've been told so I, I don't know you um, and if you don't want me to know you that's okay but I'll fix you up later on um, but I, I pray uh, to the other person I pray that um, this has uh, hit home uh, and I hope things could change but according to the Lord's will okay even when it comes to partnership we need to ask for the Lord's will to be done not because I love this person that's it I'm not gonna give up yeah it's nice to love a person not give up but you need to pray at the same time and say Lord let it be your will because what I know is not what you know and what is good for me nobody knows more than you you are the good God and you are the only one who brings good things to his children so Lord I love this person I've sent the message to this person through this good-looking Bishop but at the end of the day I say Lord let it be your will and if I'm not gonna marry this person I'm gonna blame uh, no no I'm gonna blame the bishop I was gonna say I kill you my name is Ahmed <laughs> my son I pray that things work out I pray that things work out but one day when you have a white beard like the bishop you will realize that what you were doing earlier was still like a baby kind of an approach <laughs> it's all right it's hard when you love someone I I can I, I'm very compassionate towards that uh, I feel you my dear son I feel you and I, I pray the Lord heals this heart of yours and touches the heart of the other person and I pray that things work out between the two of you according to the Lord's will and hopefully uh, if the Lord permits it we see you together and next time when you're together please come and say hello so I can see who you are and I <laughs> I will use my red belt in karate and I will say Allah Akbar. <laughs> you know, this is me and this is the way the Lord made me in a way. I can be serious but I don't like to being serious all the time. Because life cannot go being serious all the time. It's okay to joke. Even if it's a bishop, it's okay. Sometimes people will misunderstand that. That's okay because people will always be people. That's fine. No hard feelings. No, nothing except red belt later on. Doesn't matter. So people can say whatever. It's okay. But at the end of the day, it is okay to laugh. It is okay to joke within limits. It is okay to smile it is okay to be easygoing because if you truly have the Lord Jesus in your heart you cannot but smile and be happy and easygoing I can show you 
Christ is very easygoing. He is very complex, but in his complexity, he is very simple. He is God. You can never fully understand him. But when he comes and talks to you, he'll talk your level. You can relate to him. You're not going to see somebody, whoa, he's too far and too big for me. No, he will say, hello, how are you? Can I get you something? Oh, um, by the way, my name is Jesus. What's your name? Would you like to be my friend? Will you give me your hand? I'm here to help you. Is that okay? It's very nice. I don't like complicated Christians. Like they suffocate. Everything is, yes, sir. hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, relax, man. <laughs> Sometimes they startle you. How are you? Thank God. Oh, relax, man. I just said, oh. <laughs> are you okay? Everything is good. I serve the good God. What a liar. You never you serve the good God. You, you're, not, you're not good at all. <laughs> Relax. When you look at the church fathers, the true saints, the true saints, they never showed. They were very simple, very humble. You probably you would mistake them for a street beggar, but they raise dead people. They raise dead people. They're simple people. Because with Christ, there is no complications. Ah. And like they put everything under the microscope. Everything you say, it's detected even worse than an MRI and a CT scan. Relax, brother. Relax. Uh, yes. One day, <laughs> I, saw this, uh, I saw this kind of a dream or a vision. I just want to tell you one thing about the Lord's humor, sense of humor. I was walking somewhere, and anyway, I got there, there was, everything was white. There was a white table, the one sitting behind the white table was dressed up in white, and it was the Lord. And there was a white cupboard behind him, everything was white. And then he got up, when I approached, he got up and said, ah, oh, you finally made it. So he had a, he had a, he had a shirt in his hand. He just put it on me like that and he dressed me with it. And it was fit, like tight fit. When I was young, I know I'm still young, but when I was younger, when I was young, I used to have my shirts very baggy, like XXX, XX large, because I never liked tight shirts, always baggy. I was very skinny. I didn't want to look skinny, so I wanted to be a little bit chubby. So I used to ask my mom, please get me baggy shirts double XL so the Lord put that shirt on me and it was fit tight fit and look at me dumb I said oh it's it's tight like I'm whinging he's dressing me in white and I'm whinging I said it's tight he said oh wait he opens the cupboard <laughs> behind him there was only one shirt in that entire cupboard it was empty except one shirt he takes it out and he shows me the collar, XXL. He said, but he didn't put it on me. He said, take it. When I woke up, I kept on thinking, why, 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 why? And then the Lord made me realize. He says, I have a good sense of humor. I know what you like. I'll go even as far as what kind of a shirt you like to wear and I'll get it for you. Wow. 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 I think of things you don't think of. You may be wear the shirt and you throw it, you don't even look at it. But I care because I love you. I care even about what you wear and what you like to wear. I care. So I preserved it for you because I knew you were going to say that. I'm God. I know what you're going to say before you say it.
if you haven't been in the situation between being destruct, destroyed and being reconstructed, you'll never understand who the Lord is. You'll never understand who the Lord is. Do you think you will know the Lord because you went to university and you got your PhD in theology? Are you kidding me? You think this made you now know who Jesus Christ is? Satan will use you like a soccer ball. You need to live with the Lord. Not go to a university and study about the Lord. What is this? You need to live the Lord. You need to live Him. Now, Eddie and Jacqueline, let's hear something beautiful.
This is where the two become one. This is the unity where the Lord Jesus came to grant us to be united to Him and be one in Him. Um, <clears throat> just a couple of announcements very quickly. Our youth ministry meeting will be held on Wednesday, the 27th of March, here at the church at 6 p.m. This is for those who are between the ages of 18 and 40. Please join our youth ministry. It is absolutely vital that we come and get closer and closer to the Lord Jesus, serving the Lord in whichever way possible. And as young men and women, it is now the time for the name of Christ to be glorified in our life more than ever before. Be that beacon of light for this dark world. Show the world and the societies of our time and age that there are still people loving God from the heart and this God is Christ the King. He is the only true living God. Be a, a witness. Be the one who testifies the testimony of Jesus. Be an apostle of Christ in the end of times and show the world that it's not about what the world says and what the world offers. It is about the creator of both worlds what he expects from every single one of us. His name is Jesus. I invite you to come to know him more and more. Be, my beloved, that disciple. So our youth ministry is between the ages of 18 and 40. Next meeting is Wednesday, the 27th of March at 6 p.m. And also the youth ministry are uh, putting together a spiritual retreat in July from Friday the 26th to Sunday the 28th of July. And um, so please also join in for this spiritual retreat. Um, and one last thing, um, <clears throat> before you sort of come and you wanna to speak to the bishop, if you don't mind, um, those who wanna to talk to me, uh, please stay, remain in your seats because I'd like to take a photo with these beautiful young men who are here with us. Can you please put your hands together for this beautiful rugby league under 16 team? So when we say the, uh, the, the ceiling prayer, the finale prayer, uh, if you don't mind, give us a chance. So I want to take a photo and I want to look a kind of uh, <clears throat> important uh, person. And I say, uh, what's up? Do, do you have a, a, a rug, one of those balls, like, you know, the rugby you don't have with you? I might would have done some training outside, brother, right now. And you will see me running like a gazelle in my long skirt. Ah, <laughs> uh, do you see the skirt? <laughs> there you go. Girls, dress up like this. Huh? Cover yourself. Be like a bishop. <laughs> All right. Let's stand for the finale prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. The peace of Christ be with you always, our beloveds. God bless. See you next week. I'm standing here before you No 
knowing you were in control resting in your heavenly glory let your will be done for me I cast my burdens on to you Trusting in your blood you shed for me I know you've covered all my sins I'm standing here in victory I know you have done it all You're deserving of the glory Let us praise your holy name God, you never let me go. Through my darkest days, you're with me. Yeah, you have always been my strength. I cast my burdens on to you, Lord, and knowing you. Trusting in your blood you shed for me I know you've covered all my sins I'm standing here in victory Knowing you have done it all You're deserving of the glory Let us praise your holy name Worshiping your holy name forever and always. I'm standing here in victory, knowing you have done it all. You're deserving of the glory. Let us praise your holy.